I wanted to talk about artificial intelligence and how that might affect the design and creative industries. I get so many questions from students about how this will affect them and what they need to know about it. So with artificial intelligence, graphic designers can breathe easy, but illustrators, you should be shaking in your boots. I think the biggest question I get asked about the rise of AI or artificial intelligence programs like Midjourney, ChatGPT, or Adobe's Firefly is will designers and creatives get replaced by these programs? There's a lot of fear with the emergence of software and algorithms taking over our design industry, and rightfully so. Some of the artwork and illustrative work coming from Midjourney, for example, is outright surreal and stunning with artwork that could have taken days or weeks for a human to produce. And while there's some incredible digital art being created using AI image generation tools like Dolly or Midjourney, it still has this AI look. It's not human after all, and can have a hard time with backgrounds and details and facial features. Take a look at this amazing image created from Midjourney. The main character looks flawless, but a quick glance into the background will reveal a building that has a chopped up looking appearance without definition. The little girl's forehead area seems a little bit disproportionate, but a human illustrator can easily tweak and change those things. An AI bot only knows what it's fed. Still, for most people, it's a beautiful image that can easily be mistaken for a real painting. This can lead to an almost distorted reality, like you're staring right into an acid trip, a surreal dream, or a nightmare. AI image bots have no clue what ice cream tastes like or the joy you feel when you lick a cold popsicle on a hot day. It has no clue what to do with the emotions except to take what it has learned from studying other photos on the internet and then are tagged with that emotion and produce what it thinks is reality. This can lead to a disconnect between human-created visuals and artificial ones. Illustrators still at least have that to lean on. The last two years has seen some wonderful AI-led technological advancements in image and text generation. You might have heard that ChatGPT took over Twitter and the YouTube universe over the last year, with people finding really interesting ways to write books, plays, courses using the text generation AI tool. I even got to do a YouTube video where I asked it a bunch of burning questions I had about graphic design, like how to make a million dollars as a graphic designer. I also asked it to generate design prompts for me so I can build my portfolio with a realistic mock client work, which can be super supportive and helpful as a designer. So it's a very awesome tool. So where does this leave creatives? So when am I going to be replaced again exactly? First. Let's look at what is currently out there. How does AI tools stack up against real human designers? What better way to test this out than to try to use AI to generate a finished logo design? I'm happy to report that logo design is best safe for real humans and not bots. I typed in a few really good keywords in this logo generator, popped out some very undesirable results. Most I don't connect with at all. The one on the bottom left doesn't even look like I tried. Well, I didn't try. It's digital, not human. How could it possibly take my name and a few keywords and truly understand my uniqueness as a creative and a designer? It never had a chance to review my portfolio, ask me my favorite designers, or ask how I treat my clients differently. Right now, there's no way to communicate that to this algorithm. Let's try the more popular AI tool called Midjourney to see how it handles logos. We will take a look at writing prompts a bit later on, but I instructed it to create a logo for my personal brand and that it must include the words Lindsay Marsh. I also put a few other keywords in there like branding and creativity. You can see the results below. I see a few letters in my name, but I also see that it's struggling with typography and text. So typography, text, a huge issue for AI generators. And I wanted to talk a little bit more about Midjourney. Midjourney is one of the most popular image generation AI tools out there. It used to have a free trial, but unfortunately a free trial no longer exists and now requires a monthly subscription to gain access to its image generation tool. I'm also not the only one with this issue as I located several other logo designs where the typography never quite fell in line with what was requested. This might be because the tool specializes in compiling images 
and not trained with composing and arranging typography, letters, or human languages. Since the cornerstone of logo design is its typography, these image generation tools may not be the answer yet. While the illustrations for a logo can look really nice using an AI image generator, typography is best left up to us humans, the experts, us. So logo design and branding is not gonna be taken away from us anytime soon, so we can celebrate. So we'll hang around a little bit longer, but what about other aspects of design? Illustration is where I keep seeing more opportunities for AI to kind of take over. Pattern design is big business and licensing pattern designs and selling them on Etsy can be very profitable. There have been creators who found ways to use Midjourney to create really nice looking seamless pattern designs for iPhone cases, blankets, puzzles, and more. The applications are endless. My prediction is that writing prompts for AI generators will be an entire job in itself. How AI bots and image generators work is the user has to input a prompt. This directs the bot what to produce and in what quality, style, resolution, size. It can also be told which images to draw inspiration from. It just takes an hour or two to get the very basics of prompt writing down. And after generating a few images without the desired results, you can quickly see how it takes a full-time study to really create really nicely well-done prompts that generate what you want. I do believe that one day soon, full-time jobs will be prompt writing for larger companies looking to utilize AI tools. In fact, I just came across one today on Indeed.com. I'm not going to detail how to do prompt writing in this class per se, there's so much there to learn, it could be a class into itself. So this is how a basic prompt on Midjourney is broken down. So you'll see it's broken down in a couple different parts. First is the image prompts, if you have any, they're not required, but it's just sample imagery to give the AI bot an example of kind of something you wanna replicate. Then you describe what you're looking for. And you could just have a description. I want a bunny hopping in a pit of lava or you know, a mountain with you know, a singing fairy on top. And lastly, what's called the parameters. And there could be hundreds of these things if you really wanna get very detailed. And it allows you to create different styles of the image and resolutions. You could type in 4K, uh, 3D looks, and other popular keywords for generating different image styles. Once again, all AI tools require some sort of basic understanding of prompt writing, not just Midjourney or Dolly or other alternatives, but all of them, including the ones we'll be learning in the class, like Photoshop's new generative fill uh, capabilities, which will require learning and understanding how to write prompts for AI to generate what you really, really want. And for writing that amazing effective AI prompt, it's all about finding effective and detailed keywords. I can type in boat for an example, and it'll generate a picture of a boat. But the more detailed I become with my prompt, the more specific and accurate that image becomes. Let's say I want a wooden boat that looks painted in the style of Monet. It will much more likely, I will get the specific boat type I was looking for. Within prompt writing, you could start off with broad keywords and topics by stating your main subject matter. Then you can get more detailed, describing what that subject matter will look like. You can explain the style in which that subject matter is drawn or illustrated with. You can drill this down even further by explaining the emotions that are behind the subject matter. I created an AI prompt writing keyword cheat sheet that shows kind of this in action. We have some broad, large art movements you could start off with. So let's say I have that boat and I want to do a boat that is using surrealism. So you can say I have a wooden boat in a surrealism style in the style of Rembrandt. And then you can go, I want this to be hyper realistic. So you have these detailed styles and techniques. So you can have it uh, be cell anime art, realistic 3D render. You could do all these different styles and techniques and you can layer all these on top of the, each other to make a really uh, accurate description of what you're looking for because when you look at how people write these really long descriptive prompts you get a really good of I idea of what what makes a good AI prompt is by studying other examples but here's some emotions like imagination amazement freedom liberation contentment satisfaction nostalgia 
all these keywords I wouldn't have thought of. I would just think of happy, angry, sad as emotions, but there's thousands of words that can describe emotions that will all generate different images in your prompt. So where does AI source its photos to create such masterpieces? It's hard not to talk about the elephant in the room. As we discussed before, Midjourney, Dali, and other AI photo generation tools took a huge swath of photos from the entire internet to train its AI bots to generate images. That means that copyrighted photos, illustrations, and graphics were compiled together to teach the bot what the user might want to see. There's an interesting article that claims that one of the founders of Midjourney knew this was the case and admitted to not knowing what to do about giving proper copyright ownership to the artists of the images uh, this AI bot uses. When creating AI art, you can also add reference images to help the bot further detail what you're looking for. And there's no way to prevent users from uploading copyrighted work from Google search into the prompts. That means if you're using images that do not have a Creative Commons Zero license or a public domain license, you could be opening up yourself to being sued for deriving artwork from copyrighted images. So does that mean AI tools have infringed on creators' rights? This was going to come to a head at some point. Several artists have banded together to sue Midjourney and other art portfolio websites like De DeviantArt for allowing copyrighted derived AI work to be posted without giving proper credits to the authors. And it's going to be a very tricky court case. On one hand, AI tools have been trained by absorbing data from most of the internet, which is a gigantic source of data. It could be hard to prove individual copyright infringement from images derived from such a large data set. On the other hand, there have been cases where individual artists can type the name of an AI prompt and clearly see how their artwork was used to formulate the results. Albeit, it's not ever an exact copy, but you could see the inspiration. Who owns the work created by AI image generators? If I put in a prompt into an AI text or image generator, do I own the prompt to create the image or the image itself? It's a complex legal issue, but it's always worth reading more about this. A human element has to be present for any copyright claim to take place. That means AI tech cannot claim ownership of images. AI artwork does not really have an owner based on current copyright laws, but according to the terms of use of some of the programs, it does assign the ownership of an image to the creator or prompt writer. But can you hold that copyright claim in the court of law would be the next question, as nothing can stop third-party companies from taking you to court for using their brand image in your AI-generated photo. We are truly living in a new digital wild west. So what do you do if you want to take the safe and high road and protect a real artist's work and make sure they get the proper credits? Well, first of all, I would avoid putting in a specific artist's names into AI prompts. It's okay to use historic names like Leonardo da Vinci. He's been dead for many years, but I wouldn't put any new artists that are still alive and still have a legacy to, to, to build. Another thing you can do is to make sure you use AI image generator tools that are from official companies that make sure the library of photos they use to train their bots and to generate images are uh, given permission by the people who own them. Back in spring of 2023, Adobe announced that it will release a new AI image generation tool um, into beta. It was called Firefly. And if I signed up for the beta when it came out and I was super excited to be able to, to test it out. And it claims on its website that it uses only legal artist approved photos to generate its images. The current Firefly generative AI model is trained on a data set of Adobe stock, along with openly licensed work and public domain content where copyright has expired. So it's using public domain images, Creative Commons Zero licenses where it, it, there's no copyright claimed on the images. So as the Firefly program evolves, um, Adobe is exploring ways for creators to be able to train the machine learning model with their own assets so they can create content that matches their unique style, branding, design language without the influence of other creators' content. So that would be fantastic. And of course, I played around with Firefly and it does not give the same results as some of the more powerful AI generation tools like Midjourney. 
Midjourney uses the entire internet as their source of inspiration for photos to train its AI bots. But Adobe uses a much more limited library, so it is not as brilliant or effective as Midjourney, but at least it's going to be legal. So I don't think that AI is going to be taking over graphic designers' jobs anytime soon. Logo design, typography, text, layout, there's not really an AI tool yet to do that. But the future is interesting, and I think what, and I'm glad that Adobe is developing tools to let AI increase our ability to be more productive. So we don't have to focus on all these tedious tasks as designers, we just get to create. And I think that's how we need to think of AI is not a threat, but a help. It's going to help us in the future to create things easier. So in the end, graphic designers finally get to move from being just pixel pushers to real big picture thinkers in the visual space. At least that's how I'm going to think about it moving forward. Graphic design cannot remain how it is today forever. Even tools like Canva are slowly eroding opportunities in social media, poster, and stationary design work by making it so easy to create layouts, templates. If graphic designers just use fear to hide from learning new things, we can never lift above our titles and command more attention from businesses, and we'll just fade into irrelevance. What if the very tools we fear can be learned, mastered, and utilized to make our designs 10 times better for clients? The only way to move past fears and worries is to head right into the storm. Take some time to explore some of the more popular AI bots, tools, filters, and expand your design processes and workflows. So be afraid or adventurous. It's your choice. <laughs>